muscles. Digital Expression Sweden, aka Frederick, created the awesome discrete particles and tropism plugins. I think they are both must buys. However, this morsel is not about using the discrete particles plugin per se. Greg at Pixel Fondue has you covered in that department. Rather, we are going to use discrete particles to create a dynamic particle simulation, and this is going to require some lateral thinking. Thankfully, Warren, creator of the Modo Icons plugin, helped in that department. Here, I am using the discrete particles plugin to create an arrangement of particles in the shape of an M for Modo, or maybe morsel. The discrete particle generator is plugged into a replicator with a prototype disk to create a lovely filled letter. But suppose that I would like to use the discrete particles as the source for dynamic particles. Simple, you cry. Plug it into a source emitter and particle system, then repurpose the replicator and bob's your banana. I've set the particle velocity to zero and used pulse mode to emit particles at the start of time. Now let's run the simulation and holy moly what's going on. The replicas are huge. I can fix that by scaling in the replicator, but worse, they're all the same size. The problem is that the source emitter is not passing on the particle sizes from the discrete particle generator to the newly created dynamic particles. Greg Leuenberger asked me if there was a way around this, and I was stumped. Fortunately for us both, Warren was on the case. So, we need a way to set the size of the particles as they are created. Well, we can use a particle operator in new mode for that, using the particle size feature. But how do we get the right size for the newly created particle? Here's a thought. Can we use particles to array to extract the sizes of all the static particles and then look up the right size using an array element by index operator? Add a particles to array modifier and set its feature to size. Connect the discrete particles generator and then add the array element by index modifier. Join everything up and rerun the simulation. This is an improvement. The sizes are at least sensible, but we are only getting one size because, well, we don't have a sensible index. We don't have an index at all. Warren's stroke of genius was to take a step back. Instead of generating the particles directly from the discrete particle simulation, let's instead generate them with positions that can be repurposed as indices. So the first particle will be at zero on the x-axis, the next at one, and so on. The simplest way to do this is to use a particle generator set to linear mode and turn off the center option. I've also set the step in the y and z directions to zero, but that's not strictly necessary. So now feed the particle generator into the particle simulation and add the particle position read-only feature to the particle operator. We will use the x coordinate to index the particle size array and then set the size of the particles as they are created. We need one particle for each of the particles generated by the discrete particles item. Add the count channel to the particle generator and then set it using an array count modifier. Running the simulation again reveals particles being generated along the x-axis as expected. And zooming in, we can see that their sizes look credible. But obviously, they are not in the right places. But that's easy to fix. We can extract the positions of the discrete particles in the same way that we did the sizes using another particles to array modifier. Add a new particle operator and add the particle position features, both read only and not read only, whatever you call that. Create a new array from the discrete particles. This time, 
capturing their positions. And as before, use the X coordinate as an index for the array element by index modifier. Finally, set the particle's new position with the small caveat that we will need to convert the vector 3 returned by the element by index into a vector first. And don't forget to set the particle operator to new mode. Rerun the simulation and we now have particles of the right size in the right place. Excellent. Just to convince you that this really is a dynamic system, let's quickly add a turbulence force and rerun the simulation. Now that looks convincing. Well, that's just about it. Finally, I'd like to thank Frederick for the discrete particles plugin, Greg for setting the problem, and Warren for finding a neat solution. Without them, this video wouldn't exist.